Hi class, we are on to chapter 9.3, which is multi-step methods, right? So the previous three methods that we've gone over have not been multi-step methods. So we'll talk about the difference um, between non-multi-step and multi-step methods. And then we'll do uh, one example, obviously, on the example that we've been working on this whole time, right? So Euler's and the RK methods are single step okay or starting methods okay which makes sense because we saw before that Euler's and improved Euler's are both just RK methods basically right so <clears throat> the way we define in a single step method is that our next point is based off of our current point okay so yes in RK2 uh, and RK4 we found uh, new predictor points based off of our current points and use those predictor points with our point to find our new point. So what we're going to do now is slightly different. Okay, um, We are going to use our current point, but we're going to find um, several points and then use several points together to find new points. Okay, So we're not just using our current point will use several points, right? So multi-step methods or continuing methods use several values to compute our next point. So we're only going to discuss one method, although there are many multi-step methods out there. We're going to be using the um, adams bashford moulton method in this section, okay? So our predictor, you could say here, um, y to n plus 1 is going to be y n plus something else. Obviously, we have four weights here, right, times values. But we're going to have y prime n, y prime of n minus 1, and y prime n minus 2, y prime n minus 3 to find my next predictor value, okay? Here, y prime is our value, right? So when we're using the n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, the n is the value that we're at. n minus 1 is my ODE, right, at the previous value, okay? And my ODE at two previous values away, right, and so forth. And so we're going to use our previous values with our current value to find our new values, right, using a predictor as well, okay? So here, y prime n1 is my de, but using the previous input and output, as I said before, okay? And so forth and so forth. And that's true for n being 3 or larger, okay? So, again, this is for n being 3 or larger. That's how I find this form, okay? So that means that my previous 3... I have to find in a very special way. So the real question is, how do I start this off, right? I need three points to start this whole thing going, okay? So <clears throat> we use this predictor here, right, or our corrector, into this. So this is our actual new next point. This is just our corrector based on the previous values, right? So we are still using those values. Um, based on uh, our corrector, okay? So here, for these values, right, if you notice I have n, n minus 1, and n minus 2, and I'm basing that off of my next value, but of course I don't have my next value yet, but my next value is based on this approximation, okay? So the adams bashford moulton has a local truncation error of 0h5, which means it has a global truncation error of 0h4, the same as our Runcutta method, our RK4 method. Okay, So here, y1, y2, and y3, as I said before, our starting values are computed using a method with the same error property, like RK4. So I would use RK4 to find r1, r2, r3, and then I would start this off, okay? So let's do an example. Can you guess what problem we're gonna do? Oh, you guys are so great, okay? 
So this is our problem. We want to find y of 0, 5, or approximate that with our DE we've been using with this initial value. Here we're only going to use h equals 0 0.1. We're not going to look at both. Um, I'm just going to do the 1, um, and we'll call it good from there, basically. Okay, so again, we need to use RK4 to compute y1, R y2, and y3. If we had other methods available, then I would say use this method to find your first three values. Okay, but here we're going to use RK4. So luckily, we've already covered RK4 in a previous chapter. So we have those value for this step size with this DE already. Okay, so stealing our values from the previous section, we're going to use um, as many decimal values as possible. So I'm going to actually show them to you guys this time. So we have several values here. I think we're at somewhere around 11 or 12. My calculator, I think, is set at 11. So how many decimal points we should have. So our Y1, we should have this value calculated for our um, H equals 0 0.1. This for our Y2. And this for Y3. Okay. So, coming back to our formula, okay, we're going to use those here, right? So, we're starting at y3, so n minus 3 is our, um, that's the first one, right? And we're moving our way up, okay? Oops, I'm sorry. So, this is 3, 2, 1, 0, I should say. Anyway, so we have our three values, okay? So, y prime of 0 is we're going to start off by plugging in our values with the values that we have, right? So 0 and 1, we know we get out 1 for that, okay? Y1, we're going to use that with our Y1 value. So X1 is 0 0.1, Y1 is this value. So we plug in those values, Y plus X times Y, we get our Y1 prime. Y2 is the same thing, so my X2 is 0 0.2, Y2 is this value. I'm going to plug that into my function. Okay, so again, just so we're very clear here, we're just plugging them into our function. When we get these values, the prime values, that goes into our predictor. Okay, and then those values that we had go into um, my YN plus 1 plus this um, corrector value. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so that was two. This was our output for y2 prime. y3 prime, we're gonna plug in uh, 0 0.3 and my y3 value. So y plus xy, this is our y3 prime. Okay, now we're gonna take those three values that we have. And so again, I'm gonna go back to our equation. Okay, plug in those three values. Okay, plus the value that I'm at. So that's our four, right? That's the, the zero, one, two, and three. Okay. All right. So my y prime four here, right? The my sorry, my y star. So three, two, one, zero. Okay. Again, just so we're clear here. So n is starting with 4, so that's 3, or I guess that's 3, sorry, 3, 2, 1, and 0, right? Moving backwards down the lines. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, there we go. All right, so 3, 2, 1, 0. Find the average divided by 24 times my h size plus my y3. Okay, so again my current y n right so that's the y3 value that I'm at okay so three two one zero let's make sure that we're clear that we know how this equation works so plugging all these in I'm not going to show you just plug them into the calculator you can double check if you want this is what we get for that predictor or that corrector value 1.61590975633 so I'm going to plug that into y prime 4, where I'm using this y star 4 and x4, which we know is 0 0.4. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in. So y plus xy 
and that is the value that I get out. So now I can plug all of these things, except for this one. I don't need this one anymore. But I can use the y prime 4, y prime 3, y prime 2, and y prime 1, where y prime 4 was made using y star 4, okay, to find y n plus 1. So this y prime n plus 1 was used, was made using that corrector value. So that will be here, and then this will be my three, my, sorry, I think these should be, oh no, this is fine, my three, my two, and my one, and that will be how I find my uh, actual fourth term, okay? So my actual fourth term, now I use this corrector value, the y prime four, which was used with, um, this y star four again okay so i'm plugging everything in here okay my h value one to the 24 is very very similar um to this except the values are different right for the coefficients so what i'm going to get for y4 is 1.616080520093 so if you have your notes for rk4 um for the last section or you have that video you can write down this number and check the value that you had for the previous i don't have it on this screen um but through the power of internet um and editing i can show you what we got for rk4 when we had h was one right so we had 1.616073 again we had to cut it off somewhere this was the actual so here was very very close Okay, 1.616073 was our approximation with the RK4 method. Voila, okay, so back to our uh, lecture. This is what we had, right? 1.61608, so kind of close, okay? So now we can use this Y4 and this Y3 and this Y2 and this Y1 to now start to come up with our other values, okay? So we want to find y5 prime. So we're going to use y4 uh, prime, y3 prime, y2 prime, and y1 prime. So those are here, y4 prime, y3 prime, y2 prime. Okay, oops. And this is what we will get out, 1.867, 9773467. Okay, when we add that to our current y4, Okay, again, we're using those prime values. Okay, y4 prime, y3 prime, y2 prime, y1 prime. Okay, so these ones. So remember this one was made with that star. Okay, y5 prime is made with f of x5 and y5 star. So y plus xy equals 2.0. 2.8019660206. Okay. Then we can throw that into our equation. Okay. So throwing this into our equation now, we get out 1.868239919937. Okay. So this is our table of values, our x values, and our approximations with the atoms, uh, Radgeforth and Moulton. And so when we compare our results here for the approximation of y 0 0.5 to our RK4 results from 9.2, so just looking at the end result, you can see that approximations are pretty accurate here. Okay. Their absolute errors are almost identical. I've, you know, obviously this one is three times as much as this. But factor-wise, right, factors of 10-wise, magnitude, they are the same, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They are to the same order, okay? Same thing here for the relative errors for their final global truncations, right? Which is important because even though the errors are different, right, RK4 is more accurate, at least for this example, than the AVM, right, is... But orders of magnitude wise, they are equal. Okay. So the last little thing we'll talk about is stability. 
basically, a numerical method is called stable if small changes in the initial condition create small changes in my computed solution. Okay, so if I only change the initial condition a little bit and I come out with something, so for instance, if I go zero uh, equals 0 0.9. If I still come up with something that is very, very close to this, I'm stable. However, if I change that 1 to a 0 0.9 and I get something like 28.78, then that's not very stable, right? If a small change creates a huge difference in the outputs for the approximations, that is not a stable um, method, okay? so. That's it for now for chapter nine. Um, at this point in time, we'll move on to uh, chapter 12, PDEs. Okay, at some other point, I may backfill the rest of chapter nine, chapter 10, and chapter 11. But for now, for this semester, I'm currently in um, spring 2021, for the record. Uh, we're moving on to PDEs next. Okay, see you guys on the next video. Thanks.